Ah, hello, it is time once again for another magical video from the iPad. <laughs> um, right, so a little bit of development on the Jono Not Bono Cubase touch controller. Um, we have an articulation switching system and I am super excited about this. Um, obviously, thank you to Clelson Lopez for his suffering. <laughs> It's been a horrible journey in the un OSC underworld, but I feel like we're on the final climb out of here. <laughs> but I have been saying that for a while, so we're probably just going to stay at base camp now for a, a, a quite a while. The um, joy that we have now on an articulation system. So let's have a little look at it. Obviously, I'm going to make some actual proper videos with screencasting and all that kind of stuff soon. But um, I thought this would just be a little taste to stick out into the world. Right, so... Uh, I will kind of explain how it works, sort of, but I, I, I don't want to make this video too long. But basically, every track has to have an ID number, okay? You can name the tracks however you want, as long as the ID number sticks. If you have a track that doesn't have an ID number, nothing happens. However, what we have done is we have scripted this, so when you click on a track that has an ID number, it automatically goes into focus, because, let's face it, who wants to double click on stuff? You know, like when you're going to click on a, a an instrument, I should say this works with instrument tracks and MIDI tracks. So if you use V Pro, totally works. If you use instrument tracks, totally works. I should also say, um, well, I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. Like um, basically, if I click on another track, you see them change instantly. Okay, so I don't know. Performance legato. This is Spitfire Chamber Strings. Legato tremolo. Uh, longs. Shorts. And I should say, right, we've got longs here, shorts in the middle, and effects. We have a track name at the bottom to tell you what the track is. Now, um, the track name is pre-programmed, and there's a reason for that. However, because it's pre-programmed, this, for example, this track in Cubase, I don't know if you can see me clicking on that, probably, yeah, okay. Right, so there's an ID number, then it says CSS, SCS for Spitfire Chamber Strings and Violins 1, right? You can completely name this track however you want, because I know people want to call the stuff whatever. However, you can't rename this track name here, this is pre-baked, and there's a reason for that that I'm not going to go into. But um, the good news is, I've called it here, the track name, in full, Spitfire Chamber Strings, all articulations, Violins 1. It's like... I don't really feel like people are going to want to rename that because it literally says exactly what it is. And it's a bit more classy than having underscore something asterisks and some weird code. So I thought it was the, the best way to go. Um, but you can still name the tracks. Um, but yeah, let's have a little play around. And uh, I don't know, for example, uh, woodwinds. You can see the articulations, the longs. Let's press legato. Mm, or, yeah, actually. Staccato, staccatissimo, trills, measured half tone fifths, okay and um, what else was I going to say, um, all data, yeah yeah yeah, all data actually records into uh, Cubase as well right, so um, let's hit record and just noodle about for a second. Okay, so spiccato, symphonic strings, ensembles. <laughs> I can't even play. <laughs> Change. So you get the hit. 
And that will now show the data. Um, and down here, there's, you see there's a ridiculous amount of articulations. Um, that's a Cubase thing. If I pull that down there, you can see the data has recorded and there's, there are the hideous notes I've just played. Um, but let's just play this back. <laughs> Don't judge me. <laughs> But yeah, I, I'm, I'm really stoked about this. Um, I could go more into detail about it, but I just feel like I'll save all that for the actual uh, video, but. Sounds like something. Oh, I do have, uh, I, I decided to put uh, time machine uh, patches in as well. So like if you have a controller, for example, Cole Lenio, Time Machine, you could, you know, could do some funky sound design stuff, uh, I'll talk more about the faders later, but... However, something I've almost forgotten to say, um, why, if you, if you have this here and you want to change to say MIDI editing, why limit yourself to only being up there when we can have them all down here too? So this is quite handy. Um, uh, basically, you can see that these sync together. Um, however, this top one goes in focus and this bottom one is um, independent. So um, we are actually going to program a lock button here so the screen doesn't change if you don't want it to change. Um, but that's, uh, I have to stick it on the shit list. The shit list that keeps growing. Um, but yeah, it, this is handy to have it down here because something that we've programmed in this is a button called and breathe because I don't know about you, but sometimes I don't want to see all of this stuff. So and breathe makes it very nice. And, um, you know, if we just put that there, we can still use the articulations, right? <laughs> You know, I'm so excited to actually have the um, choice, just to instantly have all these sounds like this instead of always having so many tracks, man. I just want to keep, you know, 4,000 tracks got a bit much for me. <laughs> I just, I don't want that anymore. Anyway, yes. Right, so also what I should say about this is um, this system does not use uh, a, a plug. There are various ways that people can switch between articulations. And basically one way that some people do this is that they use a plug-in on every single track. Um, I didn't want to go down that road, to be honest. You know, you imagine having 400 plugins running that are just doing, I, I, you know, that's just something I don't want to do. Um, another option is for people to use quick controls and generic remotes. And, you know, the problem with this is that each quick control has 127 values, meaning you can only have 127 tracks or whatever you want to do with each one. And Cubase doesn't remember quick control numbers. So that means that every single track has got to have track automation. And that's just not what I want to, I don't want to go down that road either. I just want to, whenever I see track automation, I just want to see my panning or whatever I'm doing. Um, so the good news is we're not doing that either. So um, yeah, the only thing that you must have is this ID number and then the rest is taken care of, which, uh, you know, makes this for me the best foot forward. So yeah, anyway, right. We better wrap this video up and another day, we shall talk about the luscious keyboard. <laughs>